and welcome to worship today. A special welcome to any friends, guests, or visitors that we have with us. We are so glad that you are here. Just a couple of announcements before we begin. First of all, later today at 1 p.m., there will be a live stream of the bishop installation for our area synod, the South Central Synod of Wisconsin. Our synod recently elected a new bishop, Bishop Joy Mortensen Weeby, and this service will be her installation, a chance for us to celebrate as church together uh, as she begins her service with us. So if you're able to attend, you can find the live stream on our synod website at scsw-elca.org and watch the live stream there. But regardless, let's all be praying for our synod and for our new bishop, Joy Mortensen Weeby. We also want to be sure to remind you that next Sunday, October 18th, is our annual fall congregational meeting. This is the meeting where we elect council members for the coming year. And so it's important that we have a good turnout for that meeting so that we can accomplish that election. It will also be a chance for us to update you on uh, finances, on uh, the building projects we have going on right now, uh, and just check in as a church. There was information sent out this week by email and mail about how to join that remote meeting by computer or phone. If you did not receive that letter or that email, please contact the church office so we can be sure to get you that information. And please attend the meeting next Sunday, October 18th. We are so glad to be gathered together today around the presence of Christ in word, sacrament, and Christian community that even while we are physically distanced, we might be connected around the body of Christ. Welcome to worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God, and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and we go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. 
led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord of the feast, you have prepared a table before all peoples and poured out your life with abundance. Call us again to your banquet. Strengthen us by what is honorable, just, and pure and transform us into a people of righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 25. O oh Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you, I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you, cities of Ruthless nations will fear you, for you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy, 
in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with the shade of clouds, the song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The second reading is from Philippians, the chapter 4. My brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown. Stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Euodia and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it, and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace, friends, in the name of Jesus. Amen. We've all had our share of canceled plans in 2020. One of the things I missed this summer was having an opportunity to go to American Players Theater to see a show. In a normal year, Kristen and I try to go there almost every summer to see one of Shakespeare's plays. For those of you who haven't been to APT, it is an outdoor theater near Spring Green, Wisconsin. So on a nice summer night while you're watching the actors on stage, you can have a beautiful sky full of stars above your head. And out in the woods, you have fireflies flying amongst the trees. Down the hill from the amphitheater by the box office and the parking lot, there's a large picnic area. So part of our tradition usually involves packing a picnic and showing up early so we can have dinner before the show. A few years ago, we decided to take a couple of close friends with us for dinner and a show at APT. We packed our picnic, we picked up our friends, and we drove towards Spring Green. But something seemed off when we pulled into the parking lot. The lot was filled with cars, and the picnic area was completely empty. One look at our tickets revealed our mistake. We had put the time down wrong in our calendars, and we were late. The people at the box office let us know that the show had started about 15 minutes ago, so we could maybe run up and still try and get in. So we trekked up the hill, and with the help of an usher, we found our seats during an applause break. We, were the, we only missed part of the first act. Kristen and I were embarrassed about our mistake, but our friends were good sports. And fittingly, the show we were there to see was Shakespeare's A Comedy of Errors. This story has a happy ending, though. A year later, we were with those same friends. I officiated as they said their wedding vows together, and Kristen was standing up there as well. Our comedy of errors from the year before was a little stressful at the time, but now we look back together with those friends and we laugh. Now I'm sure there are some among you who know the works of William Shakespeare better than I do. Uh, for example, I'm sure an English teacher like Kaya will know them better than I do. But the general rule that I was taught was that the difference between a Shakespearean tragedy in a Shakespearean comedy, is that in a tragedy, all the characters end up dead. 
And in a comedy, all the characters end up getting married. So perhaps the bigger question for us is, if all the world's a stage, what story are we living in? What story are you living in right now? Does the story of the universe lead to tragic meaninglessness, a story filled with sound and fury signifying nothing? Or does the story of the universe lead to joyful celebration? Is the nature of reality more like a funeral, or is it more like a wedding? The scriptures seem to have an answer for us today. You see, one of the persistent images from scripture for God's desire and dream for us is a wedding feast, a wedding party. The prophet Isaiah, for example, foretells a day when God will make for all people a feast of rich food and well-aged wines. In other words, the author of the universe is writing a story that is meant to end in something like a wedding celebration. Several of our readings for today center around this image. Isaiah whets our appetite in the first reading. He gives us this image of a cosmic feast Death itself is swallowed up in the joy of this feast that God has laid out for all people. Psalm 23, likewise, speaks of the Lord preparing an extravagant table for us, even in the midst of enemies. Paul, in our second reading from Philippians, doesn't speak about feasting directly, but he speaks of a defiant joy that fits well with this theme. In the midst of hardship and persecution and even death, Paul will say, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. And then we come to our gospel reading. Jesus tells an enigmatic parable of a king who throws a wedding banquet for his son. The king sends out invitations, but no one seems to want to come to this party. The day of the wedding arrives, so the king sends out invitations to the feast yet again. But most are indifferent. They don't care and they're simply too busy with the rest of their lives to come. Others are even hostile about the invitation. They mistreat the king's slaves and kill them. This seems to be an allegory for the message of God's kingdom. Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is like this king and his son's wedding banquet. The slaves who are mistreated and killed are like the prophets of Israel. Perhaps Matthew is referring to John the Baptist, who went out inviting people to join the party of the kingdom, but who ended up being beheaded by Herod. Likewise, the king's wrathful burning of the city is likely a reference to the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD, since Matthew's gospel was written after that date. After the destruction, the king sends out his slaves again. Go, therefore, into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the banquet. This, again, could be an allegory for Matthew's community. I hear in it a missionary calling. At the end of Matthew's gospel, after all, Jesus will say to his followers, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. And here in the parable, the king says, Go, therefore, and invite everyone. In the parable, they go and they invite everyone. The good and the bad, the parable says. Because perhaps there's a temptation amongst us Christians to seek out people that we like, people we, found, we find to be respectable and admirable, those we consider good, those we consider to be like us, those who can be part of our little club. But this parable will have none of that. They seek out those who are also a little rough around the edges, those we consider bad as well. They keep inviting people until the banquet hall is full. It's a good reminder for us, too, 
The mission of God through Christ and his church is to all people. God isn't just calling on us to invite those we like, those we consider good, but also those who make us uncomfortable, those who stretch us and stretch us, stretch our comfort zone. Then we get this strange second scene where the king confronts a man not wearing a wedding garment. The king confronts him and sends him into outer darkness. This parable seems to be an allegory of salvation history, but it also seems to be an exhortation for Matthew's community of early Christians. This is a community who would remember experiences like the slaves in this parable. They were mistreated and even killed. Early Christian messengers like Stephen and the Apostle James were killed for spreading the word of the kingdom. Others were put in prison. As for the man without his wedding garment, perhaps this is an exhortation to walk the walk of discipleship in addition to talking the talk. Jesus, especially in Matthew's Gospel, has a high expectation for the transformation of his followers, a high expectation for how much our lives can change. The mission of the church, according to this parable, is to be as inclusive as possible, but the invitation involves transformation. It involves change. It's time to change your outfit and get ready for the feast. I hear an echo of our baptismal garments here, too. Remember, you have already been clothed with Christ. The wedding garment has already been given to you. So get dressed when the invitation comes. The grace I hear in this, in this parable is in a God who keeps sending out invitations to the party. At least three times, the king sends out invitations, and not just to some people exclusively, but to all people. Go, therefore, to the main streets. Invite everyone. Go, therefore, to all nations. So to return to our question, what kind of story are we living in? Are we in a tragedy or are we in a comedy? Does our story end with everyone dead or with everyone getting married or something like that? I hear a lot of messages of despair these days, and it's easy to feel hopeless at times. I saw a comic strip recently of a guy who was holding a ball, but just on the ball it said, uh, it said anxiety. And then someone else handed him another ball that said pandemic anxiety. And then someone else handed him another ball that said election anxiety. And on and on and on until his arms are full with all the worries that we carry with us these days. It can feel like we are living in a tragedy rather than a comedy, especially with all the suffering in our world. But despite all evidence to the contrary, I come to you as one who is placing his chip on the side of the wedding banquet, one who thinks that the story does not end in despair and meaninglessness, but in joyful celebration. The scriptures tell us that the author of history is writing a tale that ends with a wedding banquet for all people. In our life together, we get a foretaste of that feast to come. And whenever you dare to love and hope in this weary world, it's like you are betting your life that this story has a happy ending too. Our hymn of the day captures this vision well. Vamos todos al banquete. Let us go now to the banquet. This hymn was originally part of a liturgy commissioned by Archbishop Oscar Romero in El Salvador. Perhaps you know his story. Romero was appointed bishop in El Salvador in 1977. During a time when El Salvador was on the brink of civil war, with armed, conf with armed conflict between repressive government forces, right-wing death squads, and leftist guerrillas. At the time, Romero was viewed as a safe, conservative choice for archbishop, someone who wouldn't stir the pot with 
the country's dictator and other forces. But things changed for Romero when a close friend of his, the Jesuit priest, Rutilio Grande, his friend was assassinated by the security forces of El Salvador. Padre Grande had been an outspoken advocate for justice among El Salvador's poor. And this was at a time when 14 families in El Salvador owned over 90% of the wealth. Some starved while others feasted. And it was Padre Grande's outspokenness against the repressive regime that would eventually lead to his assassination. Romero described his death as a turning point for him. He denounced the regime of the dictator and refused to support the violent coup that followed him. He became an outspoken defender of the poor, those who were most often victims of the widespread violence. In 1979, he was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize for his advocacy for human rights. It was around this time, after Rutilio's death, that Archbishop, Archbishop Romero commissioned some new liturgical music, a folk mass for the people of El Salvador. He commissioned Guillermo Cuellar to write the music, and Cuellar would take some of the sermons of Rutilio Grande, Romero's friend, the Jesuit priest who was assassinated, and he wove those sermons into a new hymn let us go now to the banquet. Vamos todos al banquete. Think about the second verse of our hymn for today in the context of El Salvador in the late 1970s. The second verse goes like this. God invites all the poor and hungry to the banquet of justice and good, where the harvest will not be hoarded so that no one will lack for food. In a country where 90% of the wealth was hoarded by 14 families, they dared to sing about a feast where there would be enough for everyone. Can you see why the rich and powerful did not like this song very much, did not like those sermons very much? Romero's defense of the poor and criticism of the powerful continued to get him into trouble. And on March 24th, 1980, Bishop Romero was assassinated as well. He was shot while presiding at the communion table. So back to our question. What kind of story are we living in? If all the world is a stage, is it a tragedy? Or does it end in something like a wedding feast? The story of Bishop Romero sounds like a tragedy, at least at first. But Rutilio Grande and Bishop Romero both bet their lives that the author of the universe is writing a story that ends in a wedding banquet, a feast of rich foods and well-aged wines. In 2015, Oscar Romero was beatified, made a saint by the Catholic Church an estimated 250,000 people attended the service in San Salvador. And guess what they sang as the gathering hymn that day? Let us go now to the banquet. Vamos todos al banquete. What kind of story are we living in? My dear siblings, we are caught up in a story that is so much larger than ourselves. I know it's bad form to spoil the ending of a good story, but spoiler alert, the feast is coming. In moments of despair and anxiety, our God sends you, sends us out again and again with more invitations to the banquet, saying to us, vamos todos al banquete. Let us go now to the banquet. Amen.
With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious host, fill your church with a spirit of joyous hospitality. We pray for bishops, teachers, church leaders, and all children of God as they invite others to your table of boundless grace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious host, as creation waits with eager longing for redemption, protect your creatures that are mistreated. Restore valleys, mountains, and pastures, and still and running waters. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, as you set a table in the presence of enemies, so bless the efforts of diplomats, international peace workers, and world leaders who navigate conflict. May they proceed with dialogue and understanding so that justice and peace prevails. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious host, let your gentleness be known among those who are weary or ill, especially Jane, Todd, Bill, Joyce, Amy, Dick, Jeanette, Maxine, Myron, Denia, Galen, Annie, Kathy, Michelle, John, David, Chris, Judy, Dennis, Chad, Erica, Larry, Vicki, Darlene, Joan, Haley, James, Megan, and all whom we name now aloud or silently. Strengthen doctors, medical care workers, and caretakers who see to their needs. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious host, when we are quick to judge outward appearance, remind us how you clothe all in your mercy. We pray for ministries that provide needed clothing, and other personal care assistance in this community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, as we remember those who have died and are gathered at the heavenly banquet, comfort us with your presence. Assure us of your peace at all times. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Take some time today to share a greeting of peace with the people in your life, and especially make an effort to reach out to one another within your Trinity family. It's a little bit harder to exchange the peace when we are physically distant. You can't just turn to the people in the pew, so you have to pick up the phone, send a text message, or send an email. Find some way to share the peace with one another today. Peace to you, good friends, and blessings of the Lord be on you all. Thanks. Peace to everybody from Conrad's. Hope to see you soon. We've now reached the offering portion of our worship, a time where we reflect on God's goodness in our lives and respond with generosity. And I want to thank you for all the ways that you continue to be generous to Trinity Lutheran Church in this time. We are truly blessed with generous members. There are a couple of regular ways that you can continue to contribute to Trinity and the mission and ministry here. You can do so online at our website, tlcmsn.org. You can also mail in an offering to our mailing address at 1904 Winnebago Street. 
I also want to remind you that you received a letter recently. We sent out a letter to all members for a capital campaign we are doing uh, to finance the repair of the roof over our education wing and the heat exchanger in our building. Uh, and we are asking for people to try and send those pledges back in by October 19th. I don't know if you've noticed, but there's been some background noise here today because there is currently a crew on top of our uh, parish hall wing of our building uh, working on taking off the old roof to prepare for the new roof. And I want to share this picture with you uh, of that work that has started this past week. And thank you so much to uh, our property commission for stewarding this project. We also have a musical offering today from Dina Hipke. Thank you, Dina, for today's musical offering. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You are now invited to commune one another in your homes. If you are with other people, Turn to those around you and share the elements you have gathered with these words, the body of Christ given for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you. And if you are not with other people, know that you are gathered with your church family this morning. Receive these elements as a gift and hear my voice as a voice from outside yourself offering you this gift in the name of Jesus. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. And if you are electing to fast, know that in this time, Christ is present with you in the gifts of the Word and Christian community, and receive this blessing. 
Jesus loves you, forgives your sins. You are God's beloved child. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. Go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God.